Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 7 from the Jan 2016 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that, let's get into the solution. So it reads that Mark Blue prepared the following trial balance for the Blue Cooperative for the year ended 31st December 2015. Going down to, to the crux of the matter, we have a suspense account balance, which means that there's an error or there are errors in the trial balance. So let's go through this trial balance and make sure it's correct or, or corrected as we go along. So the blue cooperative tra corrected trial balance as at December 31st, 2015. Accounts payable is the first item that is a liability and liabilities have credit balances. Purchases is an expense. Expenses have debit balances, so that is one error that we have to correct. The patronage refund, that is also an expense which goes on the debit side. Discount received, that is a revenue that will have a credit balance. Loan interest received is also a revenue. And I just said revenues have credit balances. Premises is an asset, so that is correct in the debit column. Inventory is also an asset, so that's in the wrong column there. So let us put it in the correct column. Then we have the provision for depreciation on premises. Now that is a contra asset and as such will have a credit balance. The cash equipment and accounts receivable, those are all assets and should all have debit balances. So there are two, two errors there so far we picked up, equipment that costs and the receivable. Rent received in advance, so prepaid revenue is a liability. That will have a debit, a credit balance, sorry, my apologies. So loan and provision for depreciation equipment. So loan is a liability, credit balance, provision for depreciation, contra asset, credit balance. So those two items are correctly inserted there, sorry. Bank interest earned, that is a revenue. That's gonna go on the credit side, so that's an error. Members on a right, so that is a debit item, that's fine. And the capital is 107. So let's see if we balance off here. 704, 200. So we're good to go there. Okay, so let me just rearrange my screen because we're in for some double entry work now. Okay, so it says here that F. Phil recently started business with 22,000 in the bank and recorded the following transactions for the month of July 2015. So what they did is they gave us a bunch of T accounts to populate. So let's go through that. So the first thing is he started business with 22,000 in the bank. So we know if that's the case, we have to debit bank because bank is an asset and it's increasing. And of course, capital is also increasing, so we have to credit capital. Next, on the 2nd of May, we bought equipment for 7,000 paying by check. So if you paid by check, it means your bank account would have gone down. To record a decrease in an asset, because bank is an asset and is going down, you credit the asset account. Now equipment, let's find the equipment account because we're going to have to debit equipment to record an increase in equipment. So you're seeing, Let's just see if we could get those two on the screen together. Right, so you're seeing the debit entry here corresponding with the credit entry here. And yeah, sorry, I should have shown that from the first transaction, the debit entry here corresponding with the credit entry here. Very good. Okay, let's proceed. On the 6th of May, we paid rent 1200 by check. So again, this is a payment coming out of the bank account. It's going to decrease the bank account, which requires an entry on the credit side. So we credit bank for 1200. We say, well, we, what do we pay? We paid rent on that day. Let's go down to the rent account now, and we're going to record that entry on the debit side because every debit needs a corresponding credit and vice versa. So on the debit side, 1200 where did money come from? Bank. On what day? The 6th. And rent is an expense, and when you pay an expense, you debit because the value is going there. So again, you could apply that hack. So if any of you watched my multiple choice series from 2020, I had a little hack with double entry. Credit where it's coming from, debit where it's going, and what I mean by it is the value. Wherever the value is coming from, credit where it's coming from, and you debit where it's going. So if we scroll back up, we could actually kind of see that in play. When the owner started business, the money came from capital. So you credited where it came from, and it went to bank. You debited where it went. Similarly, when we bought the equipment, we money, came, money or value came out of equipment, so you credited there, and the value went to equipment. You debited where it's going. And like I just said, same thing here with the payment of rent. Money, came, money or value came from bank. So your credit where it came from and you debited where it, it went or where it's going. So your credit where it's coming from, debit where it's going. Now, just a disclaimer, that only really works in some of the, these earlier transactions here. In some of the later ones and transfers and closing entries, adjusting entries, it doesn't work the same way. You need to be mindful of what you're doing and your double entry rules. But to get, your, to get your foot in the door, to get a little toehold, that's a nice little hack you could use. Credit where it's coming from, debit where it's going. 
Okay, next, on the 8th of May, we bought goods on credit from S. Samson for 3500 If we bought goods on credit, we're going to need a purchases account. And we're going to debit that because we bought goods on credit from Samson. So, so value or goods is coming from Samson and it's going to purchases. So we're going to have to debit purchases and we're going to credit Samson. And we can see the corresponding debit and credit entries for this transaction. So this is the debit to purchases. So another issue people have is that they go on this side and they put the debit and they put Samson and they think that they debit Samson. No, this is a debit in the purchases account. Just like this is a credit in the Samson account. And again, credit, we, we bought goods on credit from S. Samson. So we credited where the value came from and we debited where it went. So credit where it's coming from, debit where it's going. Next, sold goods on credit to M. Long for 2100 So if we make credit sales, let me scroll down a little bit. So value is coming from us and going to the debtor. So you're going to credit where it's coming from. So you're going to credit the sales account and you're going to debit the debtor. Now you also credit the sales account because sales is a revenue and when you make a sale you earn revenue so you're going to credit there to record the earning of revenue and when you sell to someone on credit they are now your debtor a debtor is an asset and the asset is increasing so you debit to record the increase in the asset all right and again you can see the corresponding debit and credit entries here next it says bought equipment on credit from furniture and things 2500 okay if we bought equipment equipment is an asset so we're going to debit the asset account and we're going to credit furniture and things because it came from there. So again, you could use credit where the value is coming from and debit where it's going. Alternatively, and, and probably more properly, you, we are debiting the equipment account because equipment is an asset. And if you're buying more equipment, your amount of equipment is going up. And to record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. Furniture and things, if you buy on credit, it means you didn't pay them. That means you owe them money, which means you have now a liability and the liability is increasing. And to record an increase in a liability, you have to credit the liability account. Paid Samson 3,500 by check. So if we paid Samson, let's go back up. So we're gonna to have to go to bank. So money is, again is coming out of bank. Bank is an asset. If your asset is decreasing, you have to credit the bank account. And it's going to Samson. So Samson is a creditor. We owe Samson money for credit purchases. When you pay Samson, you are reducing the amount of money you owe thereby reducing your liability, which requires a debit. Or again, because money is coming from bank and going to Samson, you credit where it's coming from, you debit where it's going. And, right, and finally, we have paid furniture and things, 1500 by check. So we're gonna have to credit bank because again, we're, we're paying by check, so money is coming out of bank. So bank is decreasing and to record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. And furniture and things, again, is a creditor. If you're paying back your creditor, it means you are reducing the amount of money you owe, thereby reducing the liability, which means you have to debit that account. Or again, as we said before, money is coming from bank. So you credit where it's coming from, and it's going to furniture and things, you debit where it's going. Okay, so what we have to do now is balance off these accounts and call it George. All right, so in the capital account, we're just going to need a balance carried down from the debit side. Did I bring down the balances? Yes, I did. Very good. Okay, cool. So that's the capital account. The bank account, I'm going to see a total there of 22,000. Uh, we're going to need 8,800 on that side. That's going to be brought down on that side there. Equipment, 9,500. So we're just going to take a single balance there. 9,500 brought down, carried down from the credit side, brought down on the debit side. Rent expense, similarly, we just have one entry in that account. So we're going to need a balance carried down from the credit side, brought down on the debit side. All right, let's go back up to the next side. Let's go to purchases, right? So purchases, we had one entry. So we're just going to have a balance carried down from the credit side and brought down on the debit side. All right, let's go to S. Samson. So S. Samson, it looks like we paid off, right? The debit side and the credit side totals were the same. So there's no balance in the account. So we just total it and close it off. The sales ledger, we, we have one credit entry there, so therefore we're going to have a credit balance. It's going to be brought down, carried down from the debit side, brought down on the credit side. M. Long sales ledger. M. Long didn't pay us back. M. Long currently owes us 2100 which is carried down from the credit side, brought down on the debit side. And furniture and things general ledger, we owe them 2500 we pay them back 1500 so that means we still owe them 
$1,000, which is brought down on the credit side. Okay, guys, so that's about it for this question. If you have any more questions, please let me know in the comment section below. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you know every time I drop a new video. Don't forget to check out my website for free payaway handouts. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time. Bye.